Hey, what's up guys, Tommy here, back again with another video, and today we have some very good news about our electric motorcycle build, as well as some very bad news. Also, before we get into this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a nice comment to make doing videos like this worth it for me. Alright, so before we get into the good and bad news about this electric motorcycle build, I'd like to show you guys what I've done since the last update. So first off, I removed the sprocket. The reason I did this is because the sprocket was coming off a little bit, and as this um as this swing arm would tighten onto the motor um this would press into the sprocket and when the mo motor would move um this would you know grind against the sprocket and it would make it so the motor would become very very hard to move um so as you can see now the motor is moving back and forth very eloquently um and it is much much better um i could not i would not have been able to ride it how it was before um, because I think eventually the motor would just lock up how it was. Um, so coming over here, as you can see, I have both bolts for this rear shock. If you don't know, in the last video, I only had one and then an Allen key holding up the top one or the bottom one. I don't really remember. Um, and that's because they only, the, on Alibaba, they only sell these bolts individually, um, which I did not know. So I accidentally only bought one instead of two. Uh, simple mistake. Don't make the same one as me because then, you know, you're gonna have to wait another two weeks to get a new bolt. Um, but yeah, funny little mistake. Then I have these sad excuses for foot pegs, basically just bolts. I'm planning on, you know, making a design on Thingiverse and using a resin 3D printer to make some foot pegs for this thing. Um, basically, the design I have in mind is that something would slip over this um, sort of um, rectangular, you know, insert. Um, and then it would go down a bit, bit and then go out, and then this bolt would hold it in. Um, and that's the design I just sort of came up with in my head uh, earlier today, actually. Um, but I think that should work. Uh, resin 3D printers are very strong, and I think it would probably be able to actually hold you up. Um, then, as you can see, the front brake is off. I took it off because I wanted to reconfigure, you know, how it was on the rotor because it was not biting on, you know, all the way how it should have been. So I wanted it to be more on the rotor. Um, other than that, the obvious, the controller is out of the bike and the battery's in the bike and the motor cable is not in the bike. Um, that's because the, you know, I took off, I just took off the, uh, sprocket and I had to remove the motor in order to do that. So I had to take out the controller and, um, I had to take off the motor cable as well in order to do that. So now that I've showed you all that, let's get into the good news and the bad news with this electric motorcycle build. Four days ago my bike looked like this in this picture as you can see you can see the lcd screen is on the bike looks like it's going to work and unfortunately i don't have any videos of it so please don't ask me for that in the comment sections um so yeah um i got my battery um and i was super excited about it i did not think i would actually be able to plug it into my you know controller and uh get this bike running that same day but my uh battery came with some connectors so um, I was able to plop it in and uh, get it plugged into my controller and the bike turned on and I was honestly super surprised for some reason I did not think this bike would turn on I don't know why even though I knew what I was doing I, I just didn't expect it to turn on but by some miracle it did um so you know when I you know the LCD screen turned on when I twist the throttle the bike would lurch forward um, you know, all the buttons worked and everything, everything was working how it should have. So I decided to leave the bike on the charger because the battery was very low, only at about 12% overnight. And the next day I would take it for a test ride. So the next day I did that. Um, I took it outside and I sort of rolled it around at a very low speed. Um, but unfortunately, because I still had the sprocket on it, the motor began to slow down drastically until it almost locked up. So I had to uh, bring the bike back inside um, and I did a little bit of work on it so that it was a little bit better so the motor would spin freely. Although I still knew that I needed to take off the sprocket so it wouldn't happen again. Anyways, um, I, I did some schoolwork and I got back on the bike. This time, instead of going slow, I went very, very fast. I did a you know sort of fast acceleration up to about 30 miles per hour. And I'm telling you, this thing has gargantuan torque. Um, it's nothing like any motorcycle or, you know, Zero 10X that I've ever ridden before. This thing 
is no joke. And I know that this thing should be able to go about 70 miles per hour, you know, from seeing similar builds. So this is not, you know, some little bike. This is something that I need to be very, very careful on. Anyways, as I was going, the bike shut off. And I was like, ah, shit. So, you know, I slowed it down. I tried to turn on, you know, I pressed the buttons over and over again, uh, but it would not turn on. So I rolled the bike back to my house. I was just down the street, so it wasn't a very long walk. And I put it in my room. Then I, you know, was trying to see what it was. I took off the panel and I put the bike onto the charger and it would not charge. So I was like, oh shit, the $1,400 battery that I had just gotten, gotten the day before is toast. So I was really disappointed because I thought the battery was, you know, crapped out. So, you know, I just laid on my bed, went on my phone and just tried to forget about it. Cause I knew, you know, I usually solve things by not overreacting. Um, so yeah, I just, I just sat on my bed on my phone for like an hour and then, you know, did some stuff. A couple hours later, I decided, you know, to take a deeper look at it. I unplugged the battery from the controller and I put the battery on the charger and it began to charge again. So I thought, okay, well maybe the battery isn't supposed to handle this controller, even though the people who sold my, my motor and controller kit actually sold me my battery. So that doesn't really make much sense to me now. But it did at the time, and I was like, man, maybe maybe it's not meant to go with that controller and motor, and you know that sort of power knocked it out. So I stuck with that conclusion, and I messaged the company. So I told them everything that had happened up until this point. You know, I told them that the bike was working, then it stopped working midway through me riding it, just after a couple of minutes. Um, then I had told them, you know, that the battery was not charging, then I unplugged it from the controller and it was charging. Um, and they said, okay, so plug it back into the controller. And, you know, at this point I had, I was like, man, this is a battery issue. You know, I was like, the battery is the issue. Um, in my head, that was what it was, but you know, I plugged it back into the controller and like, okay, so put it on the charger. And I did. And you know, what do you know? It would not charge. So I unplugged it and put it on and it started charging. So they said, okay, well that probably means the controller's the issue and the controller short circuited. So I was like, okay, why do you think this happened? And they said, okay, send me a video of all of your connections and everything. And I said, okay, so I send them a very good video, very detailed video of all my connections. You know, I make videos. So I made sure that there was good lighting, I made sure to show them everything, how it was all, you know, hooked up inside of the bike. Um, and you know, they had their engineer check it out. So they didn't tell me that I had done anything wrong. Basically all they did was ask, okay, so did you plug in the positive wires or the negative wires first, which I said, okay, well, I looked it up, um, before I did. And I plugged in the positive wires first and then the negative wires. And I said, okay, so that's correct. Um, right after that, their engineer left, you know, took a two day break. So I wasn't able to um, get any more questions answered, but sort of here's the conclusion I've came up um, with on this whole thing. So it's not like this stuff wasn't made to go together. All of this stuff was sold to me by the same company, you know, the motor, the battery, the controller, everything on my handlebars and everything connecting it in between all sold to me by the same company to work in unison. You know, it's not like I bought the motor somewhere else, bought the battery somewhere else, you know, bought these aftermarket, uh, you know, off the black market. No, all from the same company, all meant to connect up together uh, very easily. The bike turned on, the bike, you know, the LCD screen worked, the buttons worked, the bike moved. You know, it would go 15 miles per hour just fine, but as soon as I began to accelerate, the controller short circuited. Now, as the engineer had, you know, seen, I had done everything correctly. All the connections were put together how they should have been. So that leads to the question, why did my controller short circuit? If everything was connected, how it should have been, you know, how they do it, then why did this controller short circuit? As you can see, nothing black here or nothing's messed up. That must mean that something inside of the controller was not working properly. And that is why the controller short circuited. That is the only logical conclusion that I've came up with on the whole controller malfunctioning thing. So 
ladies and gentlemen, it makes perfect sense that I would get a replacement controller from the company. Um, you know, if it's just going to crap out on me after, you know, a couple minutes of riding. Also, wow, you know, everything is meant to go together and connected properly. So I'm going to begin re begin talking to the company again um, tomorrow night because, you know, it's in China and that's when they're going to be back. And that's when the engineer is going to be back. Um, and I'm going to be like, look, so I've done everything correctly. All of this stuff is meant to go together. I spent plenty of money on it. Could you please just send me a replacement controller? Because it makes sense. Do good on your per part. And, you know, send me a replacement controller. Help me get this bike running again. You know, you obviously sent me a product that was defective. So anyways, yeah, that conversation is going to continue tomorrow. Um, if you want to get updated on what's going on with this bike, you can follow me. This channel on Instagram at Endoprism. Basically, um, this just this channel's name, but lowercase. Um, and, you know, I'll be posting updates on this bike. And just, you know, post every now and then, you know, on, on the story and stuff just just behind the scenes what's happening on this channel anyways you guys have a great day uh, make sure to like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and uh yeah see ya